Hello, this is Prashant. I am a faculty and a PhD student at the Institute of Public Health in Bangalore. Today I would like to discuss with you how to study capacity building of health managers. In this presentation I will describe a realist evaluation study design to try and understand how capacity building of health managers works. The background to asking the how question is in the 2010 Montrose Symposium where I presented an article trying to call for implementation research. In health systems research, trying to understand how interventions work or why interventions work only in certain places and do not work in other places is the most important question. It is also the most relevant question for policy makers. In southern Karnataka in India, I tried to use this approach of realist evaluation to understand how capacity building of health managers works at the district level. The realist evaluation approach is a type of theory driven inquiry approach which tries to explain what works for whom and under what conditions. This question is extremely important considering that within health systems we deal with subunits of healthcare organizations which have very specific characteristics. Consider for example a primary health center or a hospital within a given district. The specific characteristics of such a hospital like its workplace environment, the team dynamics among the employees or the organizational culture prevalent in the organization are extremely important in shaping the performance of these organizations. And we also know that the socio-political environment of the sub-district or the taluka or the uh, region in which this hospital is located is very critical to how the performance of the managers in this institution manifests. And we know that within districts are several subunits, several hospitals, several health centers which interact between and among themselves to actually result in the outcomes. So if we consider a given intervention at a district level, the factors that affect the performance of the individual constituent healthcare organizations are many and evaluation designs need to take into consideration such a complexity in their design. In effect, one particular type of study design, either quantitative or qualitative, is usually insufficient in answering this question. Purely experimental designs have limitations in answering why or how questions. Moreover, there is also a need for bridging several disciplines. For example, in a study that tries to understand how capacity building works, there is a need to integrate lessons from organizational behavior, psychology, pedagogy, etc. So, a given study design needs to take into consideration all these elements. In Tumkur district, there was already an intervention that was ongoing in which it was a capacity building intervention in which there were contact classes and assignment given, given to health managers which are middle level professionals, middle level doctors who are working as managers, managing hospitals and healthcare institutions at the district level. So there was contact classes, there was mentoring and there was operational research and the program lasted for about 18 months with two to three days per month of residential contact classes and up to five days of mentoring visits to the healthcare institutions. The trainees were health managers at various levels of the health system. Tumkur is a relatively large district with a mean population. Uh, it's a relatively large district in India because Indian districts have a mean population of up to two million. And health services management is increasingly being devolved in the Indian health system. But however, there is not a specific cadre of staff who deal with management. It's often clinicians who have to discover management intuitively or through ad hoc training programs. So given this context and given this intervention, one way of approaching this question of how capacity building works is this the, the consists of this first step. 
Firstly, we asked what was the intervention supposed to do? What were the key elements of this intervention? This, for example, could be represented as an intervention logic, a sequence of steps that connects the intervention inputs to the expected outcomes. These need not be very clear and often most programs do not clarify the intermediate steps through which their intervention is expected to result in the given output. As a second step, we review the theories that explain the relationship between these intervention steps. What do we know from the theories on how such interventions work? And we do know that many of these theories have been have come out of research in several different kinds of environments and in several circumstances we may not find theoretical, theoretical basis to connect some steps. And that would be really the role of the third step which is what are the contextual factors that affect the given outcomes. If you see for example what are the theories of uh, behavioral change within health services they can largely be grouped into theories that explain organizational change keeping the individual the system or the context in mind and understandably many theories operate at one or more of these levels. A good evaluation design of the intervention needs to be able to understand what was the role of the context in shaping the outcome as well as answer what were the mechanisms through which the, the observed change was produced. In our uh, study we followed these three steps. We described the key steps elements of the intervention and we looked for theoretical basis that connects many of these intermediate steps and we tried to address what are the possible contextual factors that shape the intervention. So we identified several attributes, self-efficacy, organizational commitment, attitude towards organizational change, which we used device several tools to measure, as well as we identified key elements of socio-political context, which we also tried to understand through qualitative methods. We hope to apply a realist approach, which includes making context, mechanism, outcome, configurations, to try and understand how change was brought about. So this is a study design. One arm of it is quantitative, a survey to collect key attribute data on organizational commitment, self-efficacy and the attitudes, whereas the other was a collection of series of qualitative data which included interviews as well as desk assessments. The data will be analyzed together, CMO configurations will be formed like I explained earlier to be based on which will focus on refining the initial program theory to end up with a middle range theory that explains what works for whom and under what conditions. So these are the expected outcomes. We hope to unravel what might be the plausible pathways which connect improved knowledge and skills acquired through training programs and improved performance in the district and sub-district managers. Of course, in doing this, we will further understand how we can use theory-driven evaluation methods to understand HRM interventions. And finally, this being an emerging method, we, we surely hope we can share the results, but that's not going to be an easy process. Uh, as we see, it's a, it's a new method that is only be, now being applied, but we certainly hope to share our findings in the next symposium, perhaps. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.